Spirit 92.9 welcomes you to The Lunch Break with your friends, Josh, Jess, and Rachel. Join us as we chat about life, food, faith, and everything in between. Hello, my name is Josh, and I am a people pleaser. Hi, Hi Josh. Josh. <laughs> <laughs> We're Josh and Jess and Rachel, and this is episode six of The Lunch Break Podcast. Woo! People Pleasers Anonymous, because <laughs> but not all so of anonymous. us, yeah, not, we're really not anonymous at all, but all of us struggle with this, people pleasing, and maybe you do too. We hope that this episode will be helpful for you as we talk about this and kind of navigate through it, and this is called the Lunch Break Podcast, and so we, before we get into our main discussion here, we want to talk about what we brought for lunch today. That's right. So, yeah, this all started around the lunch table, right? Yeah. That's right. We found out we have the best conversations around the lunch table. And uh, should I just go ahead and start with yes. what I brought today? What'd Let's you bring? hear it. Okay, so I made a lemon orzo salad. So it's... I was what? thinking fancy. I, I know. knew you were going to say that. I was like, I shouldn't even make this because they're going to judge me. <laughs> we're not of judging you. Pleasing, no, yeah. it's... Okay, so... We're just saying it's fancy. Yeah, we're Thank not you. judging you. We're Thank like, you. wow. <laughs> so uh, it, it was basically, it's like a really finely chopped salad, which that was the one thing I didn't realize before I make it, is finely chopping all of that stuff takes a lot of time. So it has uh, spinach and mint and basil and lemon. And then orzo is like a rice-like pasta. So it's kind of like a mixture of pasta salad and salad all in one. Um, and it's vegetarian, but I'm not a vegetarian. <laughs> it has uh, chickpeas in it. Okay. So very little healthy, but it's all, you just dump it all in one bowl and it's done. So. Now, when you eat this, do you feel like you have to have your pinkies in the air? <laughs> Maybe. Okay. I mean, if I really want to, I can, <laughs> but... <laughs> what else? Yeah. What did you guys bring? Well, I have something that is decidedly less fancy than that. I have. I'm gonna make it sound better. It's it's Josh's world famous egg bake. Yes. <laughs> is it world, world famous? famous? No. Is it even Saint Cloud famous? No. Not at all. <laughs> but I have to hype it up a little bit. It is good. I just make your basic egg. I don't know if I make an egg bake the same way. Any of the times I make it, yeah. it's always a little it's bit so different. It's so easy, right? Yeah. You can throw but, anything in it. Yeah. This time I got, I used a dozen eggs, some milk, a few different spices, some peppers, some onion. I put some spinach in there because mm -hmm. it's really healthy and you don't really notice it. And cheese, <laughs> obviously cheese, because I'm from Wisconsin. And yeah, it's tasty. And mm -hmm. I made this, I actually made this a couple nights ago because I thought the podcast was the on Wednesday and we're recording it on So we're Thursday. eating leftovers. That's what you're saying. I am eating leftovers and they're still good. It's still good two days later. That's what I love about egg bake or like quiche I'll do that too. You mm. can just throw whatever you have in the fridge in there and it's so good. Yep. Um I might have you a little bit beat on the uh less fancy than Rachel. I have million dollar chicken rice aroni casserole. Yeah nice threw the million dollar in there to make it sound better. It's a casserole where I'm all about convenience and using things that make it easier because I'm a busy working single mom. So yep. it's got chicken rice aroni and, you know, already cooked chicken that I buy, rotisserie chicken at the store. And then mm -hmm. you put some other stuff in there. We'll have the recipe on our website and throw it all together, bake it, done, easy. Yeah. Love it. Easy peasy. Love the easy stuff. <laughs> yeah. And you can find our recipes online on our website in the recipe box at spirit929.com. And we're talking about being people pleasers today. Yeah. Uh, Jess, you want to talk about how we, we kind of got here of how why we decided to talk about this today? <laughs> why did we? We were just... I. It's just a struggle. Yeah. I don't remember even how we got here. We were just talking about this yesterday and how mm -hmm. we all kind of struggle with it and we struggle to say no and we struggle to have hard conversations and just all these different things right like because we don't want other people to not like us yeah. or to be upset at us yeah. you know yeah and all three of us struggle with it yeah and in different ways we do so I'm going to switch it up I'm going to start with Josh this time so talk okay. about uh when you when it comes to people pleasing you know what is it that you struggle with a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> All of it. Yeah, it's just so often I'm just so focused on how I'm being perceived mm -hmm. yeah, by felt. other people. And so, I mean, this can manifest itself in a lot of different places. One that I think of is even I help out with worship at my church. I help out leading worship. And that's supposed to be 
vertical, right? Like between me and God. And obviously there is a, a horizontal element as well because there's everybody around. But I tend to be thinking way too much of how am I looking? Mm. How am I sounding? How am I being perceived? Mm -hmm. And it can interrupt what could be a really intimate moment with God because I'm thinking ultimately, we call it people pleasing, but ultimately I'm thinking about myself. Mm -hmm. I think that's that was the point I wanted to make is we say people pleasing, but so often, at least for me, when I say I'm trying to please people, I'm just focused on me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it, it manifests itself. That that would be one area in in worship, and and even just in everyday conversation when I'm talking to somebody and I'm concerned again. How do I look? How do I sound? How am I being perceived? And that can make me not as present with that person as I could be. Mm -hmm. And so. All kinds of areas. I mean, here at work for sure as well. It just it can really rear its head. And it I I guess I've also heard it called fear of man before or fear of people, right? Like <laughs> we're so afraid. I'm so afraid of what people think of me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I totally relate to the um thinking of it in a different way. Yeah, we say people pleasing, but it's really we're thinking so much about ourself and how we are being perceived by other yeah. people when maybe people aren't even thinking of us mm -hmm. in that way. Mm -hmm. um, and it's true. I, I feel like I'm the same way. I feel and think so much. I think about what people think about me all the time. Um, and sometimes it can just make me really make myself smaller um, one of the things that I, I can do a lot when I'm thinking too much about what people think of me, I think, well, maybe I'm being too loud or maybe I'm being too whatever. And so I shrink myself so that other people can be, I don't know. Comfortable. Yes. Or, yes. Yeah. More comfortable. And, uh, also I do that a lot when I just want to keep the peace. I know Jess and I have talked about this of, oh, I'll make myself smaller so that everyone's happy. Like, if I don't say anything, then everyone will be happy and it's fine and I don't need to speak mm -hmm. up, you know, that type of thing. Um, and uh, actually, my friend Abby had told me this and I said, ha ha. She said, we can never truly be people pleasers because people can never be pleased. Mm. And that just completely hit me because it's so true. Like, uh, if you're worrying so much about what someone thinks about you you're thinking too much about it because that people might that person <laughs> might not even be thinking that much about what you're thinking they're thinking about yeah um and it's true people can never be pleased so for trying to please them in a certain way they might not even be worried about that certain thing um, and I think also when it comes to my people pleasing, I am a yes person. So when someone asks me to do something, I'm like, yes, will you help me with this? Yes. And yeah. it's uh, hard to say no. Exactly. Oh, saying hard. no is, is a huge thing that I, I struggle with. Um, and I think a, a struggle for me, I have to be better about saying no and establishing boundaries of, I need to kind of like what we were talking about before with, um, you know, having those times where we need rest, mm -hmm. you have to be able to say no. And yeah, maybe someone would be a little upset with you, but it's okay for you I to say no. I felt my anxiety when you said yeah, that. Like, yeah. they might be upset with you. No. Yeah, exactly. No. And it, that's, that's where the people pleasing comes in. It's so true, right? Because it's all about, you know, that perceived unhappiness or discomfort or whatever it is that we think that someone else is experiencing around us mm -hmm. and like for me I find this it, even in work or in leadership or parenting having hard conversations can be really hard when you're a people pleaser because mm -hmm. the last thing you want is to hurt or upset or cause friction between you and people that you need to interact with often whether it's at work or home maybe it's in a marriage situation you know so you just don't say anything at all because hurting or upsetting the other person is going to cause friction and discomfort for everybody so you don't say anything I've I've just had to really learn to stand up for myself instead of letting things go unsaid because I don't like the friction and the conflict but the thing is it just grows internally if you don't say anything and you don't hmm. confront the, the right. issue right and yeah. so, or have that conversation nine times out of ten those conversations are okay sometimes they're not sometimes your worst fears come true but still the opposite of that is not 
addressing it and then it's growing inside you and then eventually it's going to burst and blow right and that's going to cause even more trouble like even for example you know I, I had a point too in my head about how I'll shrink back around other people and I'm like oh she took my idea she said my idea but it's fine I'm not gonna you know what I mean like, <laughs> she can have, you know and it's like okay that it you didn't do it on purpose I, I'm not saying that but you know you're just you you give things away, you don't say things, mm-hmm. or whatever it is, because you want other people to be happy. And I do that a lot around people that have stronger personalities than I do. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just, I don't know what it is. I have a fairly strong personality, but man, if somebody else is in a room and they've got a stronger personality, you know, I'll just kind of shrink back and be quiet and let them take charge, even if it's something I'm supposed to be in charge of. Mm-hmm. And so that's something I've had to work on. Um, saying yes when I should say no, not not having those boundaries. It's all just tough stuff. And and Josh is right. It all comes back to I'm not protecting myself, my family, my time, my mental health, any of it. When I'm doing that, I'm just worrying about myself and what people think. Mm. And how do we get past that, you know? Mm-hmm. That's the hard part is yeah. we can talk about this all day, but... <laughs> How do we get past that? Yeah. And I, I don't have a great answer for I that. Don't I, mean, I can give <laughs> the spiritual answer of okay, we ultimately need to look at what what God's thinking of mm-hmm. us, and we do. But that's easier said than done. I can say I'm more concerned about what God thinks about me than what you think about me. But mm-hmm. is that really true? It sounds good. <laughs> it sounds yeah. good, but I I struggle. To live that out. I, I was just thinking about in the book of Galatians in the Bible, uh, the Apostle Paul is talking about the gospel and how some of them are like deserting the gospel and going to this different gospel. And he talks about people pleasing. It's interesting. In Galatians 1 verse 10, he says, for am I now seeking the favor of people mm-hmm. or of God? Mm-hmm. Or am I striving to please people? If I were still trying to please people... I would not be a bondservant of Christ. Like he was going to give them what they needed to hear, not what they wanted to hear because he was serving God. And mm-hmm. ultimately he he wanted to give them, yeah, what they needed, not what they wanted because he knew he had to honor God and, and ultimately be a servant of him over a servant of people. So it's kind of interesting. Like you, you see that in the Bible though, people struggling with people pleasing just like us. It's good to know that's a problem that's been here long before <laughs> us, right? And it'll be here long after us. But I will say one thing I've noticed the older I get, because we've talked about how, you know, I'm in my late 40s and you guys are, you know, 30s, Josh, and, and 20s, Rachel. And there is something about the older you get, you start a little bit less to care about, you know, that kind of stuff. But it's not gone, that's for sure. I mean, hmm. you know that scene in in The Grinch, the movie with... Um, uh, Jim Carrey? Yes. And he's trying on all the outfits to go down yes. to the village thing, and he's that's like... That's it, no, I'm not no. going. No. And then he's like, forget <laughs> it, I'm not going. I, that is me. Anytime I'm going to an event yes. or something like that, <laughs> I am so just real. like, forget it. I, I mean, I have a whole closet full of clothes. Come on, seriously. And I'll be like, nothing looks good. I'm not going. I'm staying home, but I'm going to... Lay in bed and cry. Who cares? <laughs> you know, you go to these things, it's like nobody's looking at you or what you're wearing or yeah. cares if you've got a zit or whatever it is. Like, we just, we worry so much about that kind of stuff. Yeah. And at the end of the day, people are thinking about themselves just it's, like yes. you. They're not thinking about you. Yeah, that's what I have to remind myself. I am thinking way more about what they are thinking of me. They are thinking way more about what I think of yeah. them, yeah. and or they're thinking about them themselves. And I think if we embrace that thought of we're all just so concerned about what everybody else thinks of us, I feel like there's understanding there of I'm I'm not thinking anything bad about you. I'm not thinking yeah. anything bad about you. Um, I'm just so worried about how you are perceiving me. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and it's it's true. I think a, a lot of us struggle with it because we just don't want to make anyone mad at us. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that's the thing that I always, I like think, oh, are they mad at me? They haven't yeah. said anything to me today. Are they <laughs> mad at me? And I just, it, it's like the spiral of overthinking um, that I struggle with a lot. I just yeah. saw a meme about that. It was like, I don't care what anyone thinks about me. Also me. Are you mad at me? Yes, literally. Yeah. That's literally how I feel. Well, totally. I thought I thought of this uh, 
quote from The Office because I love The Office. <laughs> <laughs> but it kind of fits in with what we're talking about because Michael Scott was saying, do I need to be liked? Absolutely not. I like to be liked. I enjoy being liked. I have to be liked. But it's not like this compulsive need to be liked, like my need to be praised. Like, oh, I can I can relate to that. Yeah. Uh... I know it's a TV show. It is interesting, though, because I, I think there probably is a, a God-given desire that we do want to be liked. Mm-hmm. But so often, and kind of what we're talking about here is we take that to an unhealthy extreme. Yeah. And instead of becoming a good thing, it becomes the thing Mm -hmm. and the thing we're most concerned about yeah Yeah. it's true and I also think I think of for us around this table we're all creative people and so so much of what we do in in this job or for me and Josh we're on worship teams and so we're putting out things that we are creating into the world and we're just like Okay, I hope everyone likes it. Um, And I think that especially when you're in a creative spot or in anything that you're doing that you're sharing with other people, there can be this, uh, are they going to like it or are they going to hate it? Yeah, well, because you're putting some of yourself out there. And so it's like, well, if they don't like that, then they don't like me. They hate me. (laughs) Yeah. It's so true. There's, there's also that saying, I'm not going to get this just right, but it's like, you know, you want to be everyone's cup of tea, but you can't be everyone's cup of tea because yeah. we're all so different, right? And so mm-hmm. not everyone is going to love us Ooh. or even like us or <laughs> click with us or think, you know, that we're someone that they want to be friends with. And that's a hard pill to swallow. Right. I just yeah. want to be the exception to that rule. I Come know, on. Right? <laughs> yes. But not me. Everybody likes me. And it's like, no, we don't particularly connect with or sorry but like everyone we're commanded to love everybody right and and to treat everyone with god's love but it's okay like find your tribe find your people and and roll with it and the rest it's okay like if if i'm not your cup of tea then go find somebody who is i'm okay with that again sounds great on paper yeah <laughs> But the reality is is tough. Yeah. If I'm not c- your cup of tea, go find a cup of coffee. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Wait a minute. Nice. I should have said coffee. I'm a coffee drinker. <laughs> I don't even like tea. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> well, should we uh, do questions from the lunchbox? We box? should. Yes. All right. So we uh, take turns. Josh has the coolest lunchbox yeah. of all of us. He has this really cool uh, metal boombox looking Yeah, lunchbox. I do. The lunchbox boombox. <laughs> lunchbox boombox. So we put questions in here. I'm going to ask, ask these and we'll all take a turn answering them. So here's the first one. Kind of talked a little bit about this. How do we move past worrying about what other people think about us? <laughs> We're still trying to figure that out. I think. <laughs> I yeah, know. do we actually have an answer to this question? I wish we had some really, really good wisdom yeah. to impart here. But I, I wonder if part right. of it is just practice, mm. right? Like we expect to be able to do this right away. Okay, well, I'm immediately going to care more about what God <laughs> thinks than about what people think. Well, you think about anything else in life, any other discipline, whether it be exercise, it, you have to put in the work day after day after day. And so maybe it's a matter of checking ourselves and saying, okay, where is my heart right now? Mm. Am I being more concerned about what people think or about what God thinks? And it's not going to happen overnight, but I wonder, and and hopefully this is the case for all of us, if slowly, bit by bit, day by day, we can, <laughs> and, and Jess, you kind of mentioned this, like as we, as we get older, sometimes we start mm-hmm. to care less about what people think. Maybe that's in part because we do this day by day. Yeah. So I, I would say we got to practice. Yeah. Part of it's growth and maturity and then a lot of prayer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I Absolutely. think I was also thinking uh, with that of just taking practice and taking a slight pause of, okay, where is this thought coming from? It's the same thing when you're dealing, I've, I've heard it this way, when you're dealing with toxic thoughts that will come into your mind about yourself or other people, mm-hmm. you pause and you say, where is this coming from? Why am I feeling this way? And the same thing of, Oh, what if they think this? What? Where is this thought coming from? Why am I having this thought? Find the answer to that and then say, that thought is not truth. And I'm going to believe what God says about me. And then you can move on. But that mm. takes practice, like you were saying. Yeah. Reminding yourself of your identity. Yes. Not not who people say I am, but who God says I am. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's find another one here. Um, How are you personally working on becoming less of a people pleaser. 
I don't have a good answer for this. One. <laughs> <laughs> I don't questions. think I don't think <laughs> well, I've done en- honest. <laughs> I don't think I've done enough work on this. Though oh, I, I will say this, I think there have been a couple times relatively recently where I instead of avoiding a conflict have had some tough conversations. Mm, mm-hmm. So I guess that would be a way in a sense and maybe I wasn't actively doing that in order to not be a people pleaser but where it was like okay this is enough of an issue or this bothers me enough that I need to talk about this to that person. So I guess that is a practical way that I've I've had some hard conversations in recent years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. I guess I'll bounce. Do you want you go want ahead? To go? Okay. No. I guess I'll bounce off of that. Of you know, earlier I talked about how I'm a yes person, and I have gotten better at saying no. Um, and there have been some situations where I will overcommit, and I'll just say yes. And then the time comes, and I realize, you know what? It is okay with certain people. It is okay with people that I trust and that I love to say, you know what? I'm not going to be able to do that today. Um, and I've gotten better at being honest and admitting that rather than going and doing something that I don't want to do and that I don't have the energy for and just kind of grinning and bearing it and just going through it. Um, but I, th- I think I have gotten better at saying no. And it's OK for me to say no and be honest about my energy level and how I'm feeling and establishing that boundary of kind of creating that time of, nope, this is the time where I'm not going to say yes to anything. And these are the times where I am going to say Mm -hmm. yes Mm -hmm. to something. Yeah. I'm kind of in the same spot of just learning. And it's an ongoing process, right? Because I recently said yes to something I really, really wanted to say no to. (laughs) And, um, and I'm still regretting (laughs) that I said yes to it, (laughs) but it's like, okay, lesson learned. So when this comes up next time, prepare yourself ahead of time what your answer is going to be because a lot of times we get caught off guard and then we say yes because we're in the moment I've learned to say you know what can I just think about that and get back to you or can I pray Mm, about that and get back to you that's good Um, because I got to give myself some space otherwise my yes comes out a little too fast and then I have regrets and so that's one thing I've learned is just ask for some time to think or pray and then get back to them and that'll give you some time and space to think about how you're going to say no. Mm-hmm. Which leads to our next question from oh, the Lunchbox. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> how do you say no in a gracious and honoring way? I ask this question. Why did I ask this question? I think I just answered that for myself. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I think, I guess kind of along with what I had said of saying no in a gracious way is being honest. And say honest about your limitations of this is where my limit is and um just being i guess just being honest about that and also being gentle with how you're saying no cuz i feel like sometimes when i really want to say no to something i can be like well, no i don't want to do that mm-hmm. but um being conscious about how you're saying no and your tone and your approach to it um and being honest mm-hmm. yeah i have a friend who it was just last night, I think, had a pretty good example of that because another friend had asked if some of us wanted to go for a walk. And this friend was like, you know what? My energy level is really low tonight. Uh, I'll let you know if that changes. But then ultimately said, I think I'm just going to stay home tonight. And so it was, it was a very gracious way of phrasing it, but also honest. Like her energy just wasn't there. She wasn't up for it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I, I, it's hard to be mad at a person who says no in that way you know yeah. yeah it's hard to be mad at a person that's being honest with you yeah well and yeah you're talking about what words you use and I think we talked about this before is you know just saying like I'm sorry I'm I'm not available at that time now you might not have anything on your calendar but that might be for a good reason because you need some space and a break and mm. you are not available at that time mm-hmm. because you need some rest you know like we talked about in the last episode um, it might be, you know, saying something like Josh's friend, I just don't have the physical, mental, whatever capacity to take that on at this time. I hope you find someone who can help you or, you know what I mean? Just that it's that honesty that you're talking about. And, um, you know, maybe in return, they're going to be like, OK, sorry, I'm going to pray for you. Thanks for letting me know instead of 
hemming and hawing. I, I try to find excuses often that I think sound good mm, mm-hmm. when oftentimes just being honest is probably the mm. best way to handle it. Yeah. Honesty yeah. is the best policy. Yeah, 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 yeah mom. <laughs> <laughs> another one, another one. Okay. Um, <laughs> I think Josh has kind of touched on this a little bit today too, but how can we focus more on what God thinks and less about what people think? Mm-hmm. I think our focus is in the wrong place, isn't it? Yeah. It's so true, though, because I think I'm thinking especially of the the worship analogy that Josh and I have used of the whole purpose of worship is to lead people into worship. But it's also, like Josh said, a vertical connection between you and God and you are worshiping him. You're just on a stage doing it. Yeah. Um, And I think one of the things that I can tend to do when I'm in that spot is I close my eyes because I say, this is not about the people that are looking at me. It's about me and God. And so I focus on the lyrics that way. I focus on him that way of what I'm saying when I'm worshiping. And that kind of gets me, it gets me out of that head space mm-hmm. of worrying too much about people staring at me. <laughs> um, and I think I have to remind myself of the truth. The truth is, where my identity lies is in Christ. The truth is that God loves me as I am. Mm -hmm. And he is constantly loving me no matter how many mistakes I've made. And when I remind myself of that and I walk in that identity, then I start to worry less about what people think of me. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say anything better than that. (laughs) Just what I said earlier, practice. Yeah. Practice. Prayer and practice. Yeah. Yeah. I would add to that, too. I don't know if this is a Bible verse or a song. Man sees the outside, God sees the It's a Bible the verse. It's a Bible verse, First right? Samuel yeah. 16, 7, pastor's kid, boom. Oh boom. My <laughs> How do you do that? I Mic know. drop. Okay. God does not see. But that's a really good verse, Jess. And I, I thought of that one as we were thinking about this episode. It's God does not see the same way people see. Mm-hmm. People look at the outside of a person, but the Lord looks at the heart. And how often am I so concerned about the outside and how people are perceiving me, and I forget about, okay, God's looking straight through to my heart right now. Mm -hmm. He's looking straight through Mm -hmm. to my heart. He sees everything, and that ultimately, at the end of the day, is what matters so much more than what I look like. Yeah. And it's a little convicting, isn't it? Because if we're sitting here worrying about what people think about us in the moment, and then God's like, <clears throat> "Excuse me," yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like it's true. Oh yeah, God knows that that's the th- that's the thing I'm focused on right now, and and I might be doing something that's supposed to be ministry or leading worship or whatever it is. It's supposed to be about other people, and I'm making it about myself, and mm. He sees that, so mm. that causes that awareness, right? One more quick one. One more question. Last one. Is there someone in your life that you admire because they are not a people pleaser? Uh-huh. <laughs> Who wants to go first? Go ahead, Rachel. No. You got one? You got one? I have a lot of people pleasers in my life. <laughs> <laughs> no offense, no friends. Offense, no offense, She's not friends judging and family. You. No <laughs> offense. Um, well, actually, uh, now that I think about it, um, I have a friend, uh, her name is Jordan and she is so like just herself and she just doesn't care Mm -hmm. what other people think. And I always have really admired her in that way. Um, And the way that she has talked to me about it is she's like, I am who I am and people are going to like that or they're not. And you Mm -hmm. know what? That's okay. And ooh, oh, if how'd I can, she get there? I know. How how <laughs> are you like have that? Her here. <laughs> I don't know. But um and I love her because of that. Mm-hmm. And I think that if we were more genuine with who we were and who God made us to be, people would love us for that. Mm-hmm. If we were more in our identity of who God has made us to be, he made us that way for a reason. Mm-hmm. Because that it's it's his purpose for us. And so if we were more honest about who we are, I think our worries about how people would like us are way less. Mm-hmm. And there would actually be more admiration mm. than we think. Yeah. How about you, Josh? Anyone you think of that you admire because they aren't a people pleaser? 
Well, I have a friend, and it's it's similar to what you were saying, Rachel, about your friend. I have a friend, Paige, who just is so authentically herself. And she's not everybody's cup of tea, and she knows it. But she just wants to be herself. And it, it's kind of inspiring. It, it's cool to see because she... I mean, maybe underneath she sometimes cares about what people think or people pleasing. Mm. But when I see her and interact with her, it seems like she is just very much being herself. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. I love that. Yeah, I, we all know that person, right? I have a friend, Mary, who is just the same way. She's just always focused on others. She doesn't care what people are thinking about her. Her focus is so genuinely on taking care of other people, helping other people, and I just want to be like her when I grow up. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm sure, you know, all of these people that we've talked about, they probably have some of these feelings too, but they're learning to conquer them by loving others, just being authentic, and I think we have a lot to learn from people like that. And one more, Buddy the Elf oh. <laughs> is an inspiration to me. He'll yeah. sing, and he's in a store, and he's singing, and he doesn't care, and everybody else is getting embarrassed, and he doesn't care. We can learn from that. <laughs> <laughs> he is not a people pleaser. That's like, true. And he inspired a whole generation, including me. <laughs> On that note. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to episode six oh of the Lunch Break podcast, which, now that we are at episode six, this is the end of season Season one yes. of the Lunch Break Podcast. Wow, that went quickly. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for watching and listening. If you want to continue, maybe go back and see some of the old episodes that we've talked about. You can listen on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Amazon Music. You can also watch the video version. You can see our faces and say hello. <laughs> We're on the Spirit 92.9 YouTube channel. Um, if you want to see the recipes that we talked about earlier in the episode, that's in the recipe box on our website, Spirit929. Dot com. Make sure that you give us five stars. It helps us get a little boost so that more people can hear the podcast and talk about it. And stay tuned because we will have a season two coming. September yes. 2024. Yeah. So we're going to take a little break <laughs> for August, but we will be back. So don't worry. And thank you so much again for watching and listening. And we hope you have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye. Thank you.